the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for all those people who suffer because of the snow and ice or flood, so that they obtain the security and health they need for their families. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now in the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, seat of wisdom, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So this morning we study the proof of the goodness of God from finality. Or we call it so from the Greek, tele, teleo. Logical. Tele last in Greek means end. Huh? It's the same thing as in Latin it is finis. In Latin it is finis. In Greek it is telas. The same thing. So finally te or te or theological. Okay, so what is mean the meaning of finality? In the word finality, you have the word finis. And finish in English is translated by end. End. Finish in Latin means also limit. Limit. Border. Limit. So here, telos or finish. So the word finality comes from the Latin, and theological comes from the Greek. But they mean the same thing. Okay? So the end is one of the four causes. Huh? In fact, it, when we tend towards something, the fact we are tending towards something is acting on us, is causing something in us. For example, you left your room to come here to walk in the snow, you know. So you come here because you were moved not only by your feet, but you were moved by the finality. Huh? If there was no class, it would not be here, no? So the finality. Uh, is a cause, as the other cause, huh? influencing really the production, the activity of man. We don't act if there is no goal, there is no, uh, but if there is no finality. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so the end is one of the four causes, huh? because the end really influences the protection of the thing. If I have no end, will I will act? Will I will produce something? For example, the man who built this desk, when he built that, he has first an end. Not to build a table, not to build a, a piano, not to build a chair, to build a desk. And probably, he, when he did that, he has also or no other motiv uh, motivation. He wasn't. It was, uh, he has four children to, to feed, he has to pay the rent, so he means he mean money. So through the, the, through the making of this desk, he has some reason to work. Huh? So that is, uh, it is a fact, it is a universal fact, that everything exists with a finality. Every action is made by a, with a finality. When the detective arrive on the spot of the murder, <coughs> they see a person um, killed there. What, what they try to find first, but why? Huh? What is the motivation? Because if they find the motivation, they will find easily the one who did that. You know? okay? So the end, huh? known and desire, when you, you do an, an action, when, for example, you, you decided to come to Cromwell to study. Well, someone to become priest, someone to, to become superior general of their congregation, the master of knowledge. <laughs> someone to become social worker. I don't know. Huh? You have a goal. And that goal, well, maybe you will be ordained in five years. Five years pass very fast, believe me. Hmm? In five years, or maybe six years, or four years. Now, the, the motive you have Make you work. If you have no motive, you will not be here, no? So that is very, uh, the finality is a impo very important cause. Not only 
the, the one who produces is this, the agent is a necessary cost for the existence or the becoming of a thing, but there must be a reason for that. That means that the, the finality is not only at the end. The end is at the beginning. <laughs> huh? The end is at the beginning. Because if the end is not at the beginning, nothing will happen. So we say the end is the first in the order of intention. Huh? The order of intention. <clears throat> and it is the last in the order of execution. In the order of intention, the end is first. Because nothing will be done without an end. You, you will not go skiing in Vermont, or you will not go to New York, if you, have, uh, if you don't have the finality to go there. You know? But in the execution, the end is at the end. <laughs> and the end is at the end, unlike a movie, the end. Huh? But when they make a movie, they know what will they do, no? When you make a, you produce a, a pie, before you begin to cook, to prepare, already the pie is in your mind, and the desire, the will, huh? it, it, it is the first. After that, you put that into action. So the, the end is pervading all your action. That means the end is present from the beginning to the end. <laughs> because if the end is not present at the beginning, nothing will be accomplished. No? We call that motivation. <clears throat> and the son of darkness know that very well. <clears throat> uh, on television, they inform you. They, they, create, they try to create needs. Huh? Oh, I need that. I need that. So I need that kind of a <laughs> you know? They make known. That, that, you know, when we study in philosophy of men, on the analysis of the human life by St. Thomas. Huh? We see very well the extreme importance of intellect. We cannot act without knowing the end. So the end is very, very important. Okay, continue. So then the end exercises its causality by being known and desired. Known by the will, uh, excuse me, by the intellect, and desire, will by the will, you know, the two faculties. So come back now to, now to the act of St. Thomas, analysis of St. Thomas. Continually, the intellect and the will, they play huh? together, continually. And the will cannot play without first the role and the action of the intellect. No? Okay? So we give many names. No? We give a goal, an objective, and then a motive, etc. But all that is the end. Huh? All that is the end. Yes, brother. The end exercises causality by what? I'm sorry. What did you say there? When, when, uh, when it is known, when the thing is known, the, when the end is known and willed, huh? or known or desired. Mm -hmm. no? If there is no desire, what is publicity advertising? It yeah. is to make you desire. But to make you desire something, what they do? They make you the end. They say, it will be the happiest women. Huh? Your kitchen will be perfect. The clothes you will... Oh, and they compare some. You see that every day on television, no? They make you something to your desire. And man, if you know, and if you desire, what you will do? You will buy exactly what they want. And they consecrate 10% of their finance only to advertising. Because they know it is through advertising. When you know the finality of a thing, you will buy that. If you don't know the finality of a thing, you have no interest to that. Huh? You remember the story I told you? Uh, I received a, a video clip from it is what meant in Germany because they spoke in German. And, uh, and uh, a young uh, girl gave to his grandfather an uh, iPad. Remember that? Uh, she gave an iPad to the grandfather. And after a certain time, she, she visited her grandfather, saying, Hey, grandfather, is my iPad useful to you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very useful. So he took the iPad, put that on the, on the table, and cut the carrot. <laughs> <laughs> Very useful. So, you know, we, we, <laughs> we must know what is a thing. Huh? We, we must know the end of the thing to use that thing. If I give, for example, if you give an iPad to your grand grandmother, uh, she is 95 years old, you know, she cannot know why. 
So that they, they find I need to. Okay. <laughs> um, and intelligence, huh? but if something, you know, if we observe in nature something, and that that's that the thing, that being, or, is acting in the same direction toward a, a thing, uh, must be, there must be some intelligence in that action. There, will, there is no finality without intelligence. Because finality implies necessarily knowing. And to know, we must have a certain intelligence. So it is the, the object of our chapter. This <coughs> so therefore, when we find things that are done for an end, huh, we must find an intelligence. That is, the, I would say, the center of the proof is here. Huh? The essence of the proof is here. When you see order, when you see finality, when you see uh, motivation, all that uh, imply an intelligent being. And the proof essentially is to prove that the maker uh, or the creator is intelligent, is a designer, uh, finality. Okay? <laughs> um, <coughs> now, intelligence to foresee the end. Uh, and to shape activity in such a way we attain the end. It's interesting to see sometimes, for example, animals like bees, spiders, uh, beaver. And they act in a such a way, finally they attain the end. And so if they are not intelligent and they attain the end, regularly, not by accident, regularly, you know, a bee, every <coughs> time, it builds uh, an alveolus, huh? it is always hexagonal. Never they say, oh, today I'm tired, I will make a circle. You know? Or today I change, I will make a triangle. No. They are, but they do that very well. It is to, uh, to put the honey there. You know? We know there is a <coughs> finality. There is a finality, but if they are not intelligent, we must find the finality from another. Okay? So, for, I continue. For since it is only as foreseen that the end exerts a causality. If I don't know the, 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 the goal, huh, the end, the motive, I will not act. It has no influence on me. Huh? So, um, so, for only intelligence can foresee that which has existence only in the ideal mm -hmm. order. Because why? Because in fact, the end is, exists in two manner. Exists in the mind here, in the knowledge, in the mind, huh? in the intelligence, and here <coughs> exists in the reality. But the, 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 it cannot exist in the reality. First, it does not exist in the mind. So that means every time we find some proof of order, our hierarchy, huh? subordination, organization in being that are not intelligent, then we must say there must be a reason for that. You know? There must be some intelligence to put that order in the thing. You know? mm -hmm. So there's, in fact, all, uh, all the proof turn around the, the, uh, the intelligent being. You know? The finality imply necessarily an intelligent being. So if we find finality, necessarily, we must to find some intelligent being behind that. For example, you go to the circus, I told that down to you. Uh, I went to a circus from USSR in the time of USSR in 1967-68. He went to Ottawa. And when I saw a big bear huh, on the bicycle, <laughs> oh, it, uh, the bear by itself, he decided this morning, you know, I go to the bicycle. <laughs> No. And the master arrived with the bicycle, he said, hey, sit down, take a sugar and not bike. <laughs> you know? But there must be some intelligent being. When you arrive in a garden, you see beautiful trees, how they are in line, like in Versailles, for example, or here along the street. Eh? You see, all that was a trend, you know, Eddie. No. When there is order, immediately, you see, there must be an intelligent being. Okay. Um, <coughs> so the intellect huh, 
it, it is a, the intelligence, in fact, the presence of the intelligence is linked with the end, with the finality. Where is order? Where is um, hierarchy? Where is organization, etc.? Where is finality? There must be an intelligent being. Okay. Next page. So we have two kinds of finality. We have an internal finality, an external finality. Oh, I, what is the external finality first? It is when the end is some good external to the being itself. The external finality of fruit and vegetable, for example, are to feed animals. So to feed feeding animals is not included in the nature of the apple or of the, the corn of the, the, the fruit, you know. It, we cannot define, for example, what is a carrot. A, a carrot is a, it is a, a, a vegetable uh, destined to feed men and rabbits. Rabbits like carrots, and they don't wear glasses. <laughs> so, they, no, we can't define that. Uh, the, 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 the finality is not in their nature. It is something added to their nature, to what they are. Okay? Internal finality. It is when the end, uh, toward which the being is tending, is some good or perfection of its own. That means the end is within the being. Huh? Is not, it is not working for the good of others. It is working for his own good. For example, you study. You study first to assimilate. Huh? Because knowledge, we saw that is assimilation. So it is internal activity. But of course, there, there is also an external finality. A day you will preach, a day you will be a, a, a teacher, a day you will be a, a master of novices, I don't know. Huh? So you, but the, but the, the, the teaching in itself first, like feeding to eat, is an internal finality. I eat first not to be able to run, I eat first to continue to survive. Huh? It is for finality, internal finality. So my multiple organ or my body first exists for my internal finality. I cannot define my mouth only as the capacity to talk, <coughs> to communicate with others. You know? There is an fin internal finality to every of my organ. In fact, it is a common good of my whole person, of my whole body. But if I am in good health, I cannot offer that as external Finality. No? Okay. <laughs> um, I continue. Every being possesses its own perfection. What is the first perfection of every being? To exist. Huh? To exist. That is the first, the most important. The rest follow. Huh? Either as a all possessed, that means as a perfectly complete, huh? that means pure act. Complete, huh? realized perfectly. Pure act. Pure act means huh? pure perfection. Huh? So, who can be, who can consider to have having pure perfection only the pure act? Pure act is God. Huh? Okay, but we have a partially process, huh? and partially to be attained. That means, for example, when you. Uh, a man is intelligent and has a free will, he is partially complete. But he is not totally what he will, what he, what he will be. Wait, say that again, So when you have, your, you have your, your intellect and your will, you are a complete person. Huh? But you are not absolutely perfect. Why? Because you are in potency to continue to grow. Continue to know, continue to love, continue to serve, you know. So we are, uh, it's a partially process, uh, the, 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 the perfection. So if the perfection is partially processed, and the perfection is growing, uh, there must be a reason, a finality for that. A finality. For example, when a boy is growing, uh, he is six years old, after that he is ten years old, he is growing, uh, uh, in his body, in his mind, in his heart, in all his life, 
there must be a finality. The finality is to become a complete adult. But the perfection of man is not complete, the proof of that. You can learn, you can study up to the last minute of your life. And uh, there is always a possibility to grow, uh, to, to know, to love, to serve, etc. Okay? Um, so two kinds of goodness. Uh, uh, because we are, when we speak about N, that's another point, very important. No? When we speak about N, we speak about good or goodness. No? Because we cannot tend up to nothing. We have to thank some being, no? And when we turn toward a being, remember being is one. Being is true, being is good, no? So when you tend toward a being, through your end, to your intellect, you tend to the truth, and to your will, you tend to the good. Huh? So uh, the absolute, no, the goodness and the relative goodness. Okay, and look at the text here. <coughs> the absolute goodness or the transcendent good. Transcendent good, that is it. You remember when studying metaphysics, we have three transcendental, the one, the true, and the good. That means every being, uh, every mode of being must be one, true, and good. Otherwise, it will not exist. So that is the transcendental. That is the goodness, the absolute goodness. That means the fact a being exists, it possesses goodness. The fact it exists because existence is a goodness, is a good thing. Huh? Okay. Every being is good in huh, certain sense. And that good is for itself. That means when I speak of being, here is the being in itself. The being, huh, I, for example. So to be complete, I, I, I must be a true man, a good man, a one man. You know? In fact, it is universal for everything. Yeah, we have absolute goodness. Being is a relative to the okay, I explained that. Secondly, relative goodness. Or goodness not for you, but for an other. Huh? For an other than oneself. So that goodness we call also is claimed by the transcendental being. Okay, look at that here. The absolute goodness is the goodness in the being. Okay, that is Absolute. But the goodness of the being is not only for the being, it is for other. Others. Why? Because true, being as true, can be known by intellect. intellect. Another intellect. So it is linked to another intellect. And good is, is to another free will. will. Or free will. will. That means. The fact a being exists, absolutely he is true, one, and good, but he is also relatively true and one and good for others. He can be known, he is intelligible, he can be loved, he is another, huh? lovable. Huh? He can be loved, he can be appreciated, etc. Okay? Therefore, every being takes his part with his relation to goodness and truth. Every being uh, is related to goodness and truth. The fact a thing exists, it possesses a truth, and that truth can be known by another intellect. The fact a being exists is good, and that goodness can be, uh, be, be willed by another intellect. But if we apply that, for example, for men, suppose uh, we are true. We are, at least, if we, okay, uh, forget, but let's, let's just think about the thing. Nobody never will see. For example, a flower in the forest, a tree, never. Nobody in the whole universe, never, during all its existence, nobody will see it. So it cannot be uh, known, except by the one who did that. You know, we can, we, 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 we can find sometimes, that happens, some artists, 
and for their own pleasure, they painted. And they kept their painting in their attic. You know? And when they die, we discover they did something marvelous. You know? So the, that is the, at least, at least, if I exist, if a thing exists, at least must be known by the one who did that. No? That means the existence of being implies necessarily an intelligence at the source of that being. Because being is true. Because it's true, the truth must be put in him by an intelligent being. That means it's the same for the good. If there is some good in the being, that must be coming from a source which is good. And when we study the attributes of God, we will see that in fact every being, finite being, share in the truth of God, share in the being of God, share in the unity of God, and share in the goodness of God. And because we have that truth, that goodness, we can be in relation with others. So that is huh, uh, the, we call the relative goodness. Huh? Okay. Now I go to 3.2.7. By the way, we are here strictly in metaphysics. Huh? So uh, you know, those who study metaphysics, maybe you, it's with memories for you. Huh? The other, you understand, I am sure, no problem. <laughs> okay, 3.2.7. Then external finality is an universal as internal. And indeed, we cannot explain the universe as an order and unified system. For, look, for example, all the, the, the nature huh? okay, as a system without admitting that external finality perverts it. That means the finality of the universe is in it, but that finality, that order of the universe, can, does not come from itself. It must not come from someone who put that order in the thing. Okay? I continue. For it is by means of external finality that the parts of the universe are linked together. You know the problem of multiplicity. We have multiplicity of things and we have unity of being, and the unity of the whole. Though but a unity of order. So if there is order in the universe, look at the solar system. We can pre preview with exactitude when will happen, will take an eclipse of sun or eclipse of moon. We can know exactly at what time would be a conjecture between two planets. We know that. Why? Because there is order. If there is order, there must be intelligence. Huh? There must be someone who is acting, huh? putting that order into the thing, because the thing by itself will not be order. <laughs> you take uh, 100 bricks. You buy. You see, your bursar say, a brother, go to the store and buy 100 bricks. So you go to the store and you put the bricks there. Will the brick by themselves organize uh, for an altar, for example, or to, uh, to, to, to make a chimney, to make a... No. You have to put some men working on that, putting in the brick some order, some uh, finality. In fact, that proof is close to the other proof. In fact, there is nothing existing without a, a cause. Huh? But when there is a cause put into the a thing, and that thing cannot by itself, huh? it's not intelligent, that must be another one who put that order in that. For example, uh, um, a bird, uh, he, he was born, for example, in <laughs> he was born in, in, uh, in Nicaragua, and during the summer he comes to Canada because it is fresher <laughs> than Nicaragua. And he arrives at the same place as his father bird was the year before, and he built the, the nets. The same way without going to technical school. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. Huh? We, we observed that in the, at spring in Canada many times. The brother put little, little uh, houses for pigeon for uh, for birds, and they turn, they turn, they turn. As long as you don't put the 
the, the, the little box and the little uh, house opening the, so they can build their mind. Why? They never study. They never, uh, they don't have a GPS and they can travel thousands of kilometers of mile and arrive and build a nest without, that means someone, some power must have put some intelligence in their mind. We call that the instinct, no? So that, that is a kind of an idea. We have to explain that, not from the thing itself, because it's not intelligent. So there must be some desire, okay? So, um, look, for it, I gave you, yes, brother. So I've heard uh, people call it as a, a flower or something. It's not intelligent, but it, there's an intelligent design. You can I, call it like, it, 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 a rose, for example, yeah. a marvel. A rose is a marvel. No? So the rose can can the rose by itself design and produce everything. It's not intelligent. So that means there must be a designer, someone who put into the rose some organization, some plan, no? some finality to become a rose. Because a rose does not engender a, dande, a dandelion or a lily. A rose and gender, a rose. Huh? That means there is, there is an order, there is a finality. A rose produces a rose. Huh? A dandelion produces a dandelion, you know. And that is not a trend, you know. It is order. Every time there is order, there is finality. Every time there is finality, there is intelligence. Here we, we cannot prove the existence of God. Be careful, that proof does not prove the existence of God. Prove that the maker, the producer, or the creator is intelligent. intelligent. And it's very important because if he is intelligent, he is a person. That is the characteristic of an, a, a, a person is to be an individual who is intelligent and free. Mm. That means God is a person, is a personal God. It's very, very important. It's not Everything, like your pantheist, no? okay? But I give you another example. Four, Mr. Four, make calves. Hmm? Make calves, okay? So when he make a car, he build a car in such a way that the car will function. Huh? If it is well built, it will function by itself. Automobile, huh? automobile. What is the name? Auto. Self, huh? auto, mobile, able to move, huh? automobile, car, automobile. So it, there, there is, when, when they produce a car, it is to make that car be or able to, uh, to move. Hmm? That is the car, the, fi the finish operis. The name, the end of the thing, of the work, and the end of the work. For example, when the, the, the carpenter did produce this desk, it used wood. When he produced this piano, he used wood. But when he used wood, he, he intended to put into the wood the form of a desk. That is the end of the work. The end of the work was to produce a desk. You go to the carpenter, you see, you know, I need 20 desks for my school. So he has to put, uh, to have the idea what is a desk and to put that in his work. That is the finish of Paris. Now, there is also another end <coughs> added to the, the work. We call it in Latin finish operantis. I mean the end of the worker. Huh? The end of the worker. For the end of the work is to produce, of course, the worker must want to produce a desk. That is obvious. Huh? But he can work also for his money, to have money, huh, to feed his children, etc. Or he can participate in an ex exhibition or a competition, huh, etc. So that, that is added to the, the finish. So we have to, you know, to understand that because it is very used in ethics also. Huh? Finis operis, finis operantis. Huh? 
That means we can add an external finality. That finis operis is the external finality. Fini, excuse me, operantis. Finis operis is the internal finality. The internal finality of a desk is to be used to put document and to work on it for intellectual subject. If you want to cut, uh, to cut, uh, uh, you kill a pig and you want to, to, the, to, the, to, to cut the pig, you don't use a desk. You use another device, you know. So the, that is the internal finality. You, a knife. What is the internal finality of a knife? To cut. Huh? But you can use it to kill or to sculpt huh, wood. So the, the first, it, it is to cut, but it can be used. We can add another finality to the, the end of the work itself. So that two kind of finality, internal finality and external finality. But there is no external finality first if there is no internal finality. If the, the, if the worker, uh, the, the carpenter, does not produce a desk, he produces a bed, but you cannot write on it, you know? So we, the, the first, there is no external finality. First, if there is no internal finality, that is common sense. Huh? Okay, I go to page 11. <coughs> So is it possible to know the external finality? For example, when um, the, the, black, the, um, the silver smith uh, is making knives and forks and spoons, can he know all the finality possible? Uh, no, he cannot. He cannot know that when he is making that beautiful knife, it will be served to kill uh, a person, or uh, that fork uh, to 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 uh, to, break, to destroy an eye, you know, a gun. Uh, that is the problem. Huh? Uh, a, a gun is 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 used to kill. No, the the internal finality. A gun is to to kill, but not to kill men. Huh? To kill the bees, to kill birds, etc. But when they, they produce a gun, it can be used also to murder. You know? So that is the, the, the we can add a many a many external finality to the internal finality, but we cannot know. I cannot know what is the internal finality of a thing, but they cannot do all the possibility of using it for an external finality. Okay? So that we see here, the clockmaker huh, and the turkey. For example, the, <coughs> the, what is the, the, the goal of the wing of the turkey? It's to fly, no? Huh? But when you kill a turkey on Thanksgiving, my mother, my grandmother did that, I said that in the country, they have no broom. So what she used to clean the, the, the table? Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. A wing of a turkey, a wing of chicken, you know? <laughs> And even for the floor, you know. But that is the turkey made to become a broom. No. But it can be used as a broom. <laughs> okay. Um, I go to a uh, second uh, in the middle, on the other end, just after the, the rectangle. Huh? Sometimes it is possible to recognize the external finality with certainty, sometimes. So we can say uh, in that time, external finality is the complement of the internal. I go to the example here. If I find that the teeth and viscera of certain animals show me that these animals uh, are intent to get their sustenance from grains or grass, you know, the teeth of a cow are not the same way, uh, made the same way as the teeth of a wolf, for example, and, uh, because they are not distinct for the same thing. Huh? I can, then I cannot be wrong in thinking that the grain and grasses are intended to be eaten by this animal. So I can, I can say, you know, I cannot say at first sight that the grain of a, 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 of a plant are, 
uh, first to be eaten. Of course, we know, and we know that wheat is to be eaten. But, but the grain on, 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 the, on the stem, on the stem, we see, huh? it is first to reproduce. Is this the way for the wheat to be reproduced? Huh? For, is the same for corn, you know? But by the fact that animals eat that, by, by we eat that, we can say there is a finality in the seed to be eaten. Not only the seed is to assure the reproduction of the species, but the seed is made to feed people. So sometimes we can know clearly huh, the external finality of things. But sometimes it's difficult. For example, mosquitoes. Hmm? Sometimes people say, why mosquitoes exist? I can say they exist because they feed bats. They feed bats during the night. They feed birds during the day. And you suppress birds, you multiply mosquito. If you suppress mosquito, your bird will eat your corn. Huh? <laughs> There is a, it, yes, we can find, you know, in science, through science, we can find some finality in things which at first sight, you see, I don't know why. <clears throat> I saw recently a movie about, it, a documentary, very beautiful documentary, about the problem of, you know, the, the animal, when they eat, they destroy huh, the ground, uh, eating and also with, with their, uh, what is it, their, uh, Oves. 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 Huh? So, you have in, in, in Africa a huge plain huh? somewhere. And you, there are thousands, thousands of buffaloes. Thousands. You know what happens? If they stay there, a long time they destroy the, the ground. But God is intelligent. He sent lions. <laughs> so when the lions arrive, what happened to the two, three thousand buffaloes? They move, and the ground is not destroyed. You know, that is that was discovered recently. Okay, that man who did that was among the discovered. He discovered that it is necessary that they move, and to make them move, they have no cowboy. Huh? They have lion, and the lion also, but they don't kill it. They want to kill the weak girls, huh? So they, they, it is a kind of control of bird, <laughs> bird control, but not for the best. They, usually they, they kill the, those who are weak. You know, in the order of nature, there is balance, and we find finality. It's interesting. Studying science, instead of, say, denying God, we should, in the contrary, say that is a marvelous organization. Huh? I never thought the lion was so beneficial. I was, they were cruel. Of course, they, they seemed to be cruel to kill the gazelle, to kill the buffalo. But at the same time, they saved the ecology. And so, continually, the grass is renewing because they are moving. Okay? It's only an example to make you understand that we can discover now more and more the finality of things we were not able to discover before. That is the science. Huh? Science tries to explain some phenomena. Okay. A remark, um, the force of the proof does not depend on our ability to put out external finality in all cases. We cannot find finality in every time. We can find some, and because we can find some, we can see there must be an, a designer, an intelligent being to put that. You know, when we speak about we speak we think about those lions huh, who are at, attacking those beautiful thousand we don't we don't think about the goodness of their action. The necessity of their is the same for the world somewhere, you know. So it, it is equilibrium in nature. If there is equilibrium, there are there is finality. Huh? Finality. Uh, I told you uh, what happened to the, uh, the first French who came to Canada. Uh, you know, if you live in Canada, uh, in June, it, in the mountain, it's horrible. Huh? They are eaten by little fly, we call black fly. Huh? Horrible. They are, they are cannibals. Huh? 
And, 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 and uh, I thought that they, what they say, they say, okay, next time we go to France, we bring with us uh, Sparrow. Sparrow or, uh, yeah, Sparrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, take Sparrow. And the first year, the Sparrow, 25 Sparrow, 25. And they were very happy because they had a lot of fly to eat. <laughs> they eat fly. <laughs> but, the, and the crop was marvelous, but they were busy to eat fly. But the year after, what happened? No. They discover corn. They discover good thing to eat. Yeah. And they forgot fly and they destroy corn. <laughs> you know, balance in the nature. Okay? That is a proof of finality. A proof there is an intelligent creator behind that. Huh? Page 12, uh, St. Thomas, uh, the text of St. Thomas here, um, he starts from the fact huh, that uh, even animal, not intelligent uh, uh, being, act for a purpose, even them. Therefore, I read the text, it is not plain, it is plain, huh, it is evident, that not fortuitously, not fortuitously, but designedly, that is not at random, but with a purpose, do they achieve their action? Huh? So that means when a bee is producing uh, alveolus, very well hexagonal, when a spider is producing a beautiful web, there is a reason for that. There is a purpose for that. You know? okay. Therefore, some intelligent being exists, by which all natural beings are ordained for a different purpose. So when even even you know, you go in the ca in the kitchen. You have many tools, huh? many things on the wall. Why they are there? Because they have a purpose. They have a finality. And you, and when you were a kid, you say, "Ma, pa, why, 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 why that? What is that? Be? Why, 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 why?" And when you say, "Why, why, why?" you were searching for a finality. Huh? Finality. Okay? Uh, I continue. So, different step of the argument. In, in the proof of the existence of God, we have on the minor or the major. It is the major first, the minor. The minor is attached to the fact. And the fact there is finality. The major is the principle. Huh? In the principle, in fact, it is very simple. If thing ten power and n, there must be an intelligent being. Huh? Here, and that is here. Major. Every every uh, fact uh, expressing order, hierarchy, uh, uh, adaptation, progress, all those are proof of intelligence. Now, the fact there is there are many facts, many beings in nature uh, that act with a purpose. In fact. All act for a purpose. Huh? And what is the proof of the there is a purpose? What is the proof there is an intelligent uh, being? It is the regularity and the uniformity of it. Regular and uniform. When the facts are regular and the facts are uniform, we must say there must be an intelligent being. Because uh, if it is at random, what is the characteristic of at random? It is not to have order. That the characteristic of random, it by chance, is disorder. Disorder. You know? If there is order, there must be intelligence. Huh? Yeah. That is a regularity and uniformity. And that is the foundation of science. Physics, chemistry, astronomy are based on that. Regularity and uniformity? Yeah. It is because the phen the, we see there is a law very important in physics. Huh? In the same condition of pressure, huh? the same condition, the same cause produces the same <coughs> effect. If you can say that, why? Because there is finality, huh? regular and uniform. If you put fire, and you, uh, you put a fire, you put a fire, and you put water on the fire, what will happen? Water will become hot. 
<coughs> and you have coffee, you know? <coughs> you have a source of heat. Now you put something to, to make hot. If you want to, to, uh, to, uh, to, want to put, you prepare ice cream, you will not put that on fire. You put that in the freezer, no? <coughs> the freezer has a finality that the microwave does not have. Huh? Common sense. Common sense. Sometimes we forget, we forget common sense. No? So it can be... <coughs> <coughs> If it is by chance, what is the character by chance? No regularity, no uniformity of you want, no order, huh? no hierarchy, no progress, because it is like that, you know? <coughs> Next page, page uh, 13. <coughs> so here we speak the case of ideal existence. What meaning? Huh? That means the end, huh, the finality, first exists only in the mind of the agent. Huh? First, the finality, huh, the goal, the motivation, exists only in the mind of the agent. There is no cause without, no effect without the cause, so we need an agent. But if the agent acts with uniformity, with regularity, here, in his mind, there must be finality in his mind. That means he must be intelligent. Or if he is not intelligent, somebody make him using a, 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 a functioning in, in an intelligent way. For example, a robot. Hmm? A robot. <laughs> Today, they, they do see think better than men, even for surgery. Huh? But uh, they, they are so precise, a man will shake, but a robot will not shake. You know? So they, they, but they, are they intelligent? No. But they are able, they have a finality, very precise, wonderful, because there is an intelligent being. Look, at you, uh, majority of you, you have a computer. You have a tablet, you have an iPhone. It's, they are marvelous. It's, they are marvelous. Imagine yes, 60 years ago, when we spoke about that, it, it was something impossible. No? But today is realized. Is the matter itself organized that? Uh, we throw the piece of, of a computer, and oh, together we have now an iPad, we have a, a tablet, we have a. If the computer is able to make operation, intelligent operation, it is not by himself, it is because there is an intelligent being who put that capacity in the computer. That means if there is finality, the finality must be first in the agent. Okay? <clears throat> I continue the text uh, just. Um, if, um, further, okay, further, if the end in question was some good of the being exercising the activity, that means the agent, huh? oh, efficient cause here, huh? and if the end was attained by the exercise of natural activity of that being, then the intelligent must be two things. In the part of the being itself, that means because the being is intelligent, and he does that because he's intelligent, or that means in the author of the thing, the author of nature, huh? the author. If a bee is able huh, to make an hexagon better than I can do, I'm sure it's not perfect at all, huh? but a bee can do that perfectly, you know? because some intelligence is giving to the bee the power to build a hexagon with exact angle, you know, and equal side. He cannot do that by itself. He is, we call that the instinct, of course. But the instinct is put into the mind, uh, uh, the, 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 the power, the, the bee, or the spider. Huh? It must be a cause for that, okay? 
Et quand il lex paragraphe, tri tri tout tout. So that not the minor. The external finality is a fact of experience. Huh? It's a fact of experience that animal or uh, even material thing, non-intelligent, act with a purpose. Huh? With a purpose. Uh, fire, for example, has a purpose. Fire is not to to freeze thing. It is cook thing. Huh? But if you, uh, you if you have coal, we don't we don't cook with ice. No, it did not do it in Vietnam. No, we use you know there we are able to use things. Why? Because man is able to find the finality in the thing. We find the finality at first sight. For example, our ancestor. 3,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, because we live for 3 million years, according to scientists. No? You know, when they saw trees, did, did they think about table, about desk? No. Because it's, the desk is not in the, in the tree. But today, a carpenter can see a tree. He can see that would be very good to build the chapel here. You know the four, the, the, the beam we have? They were prepared, huh? chosen for that chapel. So when they cut the tree, they find the tree very high. All that is, man put it finality in the... So if man is able to put finality in material things, we can see that, or see God can put that also. Huh? Finality. And when there is a finality in thing, and man has nothing to do with that, no, no man put in the bees, in the spider, in the beaver, huh, that capacity of building things correctly and useful, huh, there must be some, someone hmm, who is intelligent, very <laughs> intelligent, huh, okay? infinitely intelligent. Okay? Um, well, I go to the next page, page 14. Oh, here we get the gift of a bird, for example. Huh? <coughs> the bird acts blindly, hmm? and yet clearly the activity is not really blind. You know, when the bird is leaving South America or Nicaragua or Costa Rica to go to Canada huh? for to, to spend his vacation there, <laughs> you know, he does not know where is Canada, he does not know, you know, he follow very well his instinct. It's a marvel, a marvel, a marvel. For example, uh, what is the stork, a stork? What is the, the big bird that uh, is supposed to carry the babies? Stork. Okay. Stork. Huh? Stork. stork. They are coming from uh, South, uh, they are Central Africa. And they go to Alsace. They go to France and they settle on the chimney and we can now know them because we put uh, some uh, uh, system to, f to follow them. It's a marvel. It is a marvel. They never study uh, how to pilot. They have no GPS and they go to the same chimney. It's great, great to do that. And sometimes we are lost in, in middle town. Huh? <laughs> All that, all that is made by some intelligent design. You know, where we are going to? We are going to arrive to the necessity to affirm. The necessity to affirm there must be, and the maker of all that must be a wonderful design. It must be intelligent, super intelligent. <coughs> For us, he is div divinely intelligent. <laughs> but the proof cannot prove that. We cannot prove that that designer is God. We can prove there must be a designer. But we can prove that the designer is God. Why? Because we proved that with the three other proof before. Okay? Uh, I continue. But the knowledge and the purpose must be in the mind of some other being. And his other being can be no other, in this case, than the author of the being. So we saw, you remember, with the three first proof, we saw that nothing exists without a first cause, no? 
and without the necessary being. And we saw, we saw also that being must be creator. Why? Because he depends on nothing to make something, you know. So that being now, we, saw, we spoke about before, but it must be the one who has that intellect. He must be the author of nature, huh? of the being and also of the instinct of the thing. In the case of man, uh, man does many things, but he is the author of the intelligence of man. And for, for animal, he is the author of their instinct. And for material thing, he is the author of the laws huh? which direct their activities, you know, for example. Okay? Um, of course, uh, when you see, uh, I told you about uh, the, the bear, huh? the Viking, huh? you know, uh, when an animal is tamed, uh, we, in fact, he is tamed in the measure he is influenced by another intelligent being. I, if I go in the forest, and suddenly I see a dog dancing. <laughs> <coughs> Very strange. <laughs> I will see that in the circus. In the circus, I don't see that in the forest. Why? Because it's not natural for a dog to dance. The tango. <laughs> no, if the, I saw a movie about that. You see a dog, he dances very well. He, he follows the music. And he, 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 that dog is wonderful, but. It's not natural. He must someone who cut and push him through recompense. Huh? No sugar, no candy, no dancing. Sometimes children like like that. Huh? I would do that, mother, but give me a cookie. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, promise me to go to their equipment Sunday. <laughs> that, that <is. laughs> okay. So, um, example of uh, internal finality from the structure of animal. I already have spoke about that. Huh? I'm going to go now to the objection of evolutionists. I have 10 minutes for that, 15 minutes. Um, you know, evolutionists, for them, structure does not indicate purpose. In fact, they don't accept finality. And, uh, I say materialist uh, evolutionists. I don't say evolutionists. I say materialist evolutionist because we can be uh, evolutionist but not materialist. For example, uh, Jean Paul II in his letter, you have that in your text here. Huh? You have a very good text about evolution, the message of, uh, to the scientists. Huh? He, he, he speaks about that huh? and he said that uh, it is more than a simple, uh, a simple uh, hypothesis. Huh? You know? And, and, but, but science does not contradict faith. We accept if there is evolution, what is evolution? It is progress. If there is progress, there must be a reason for that. There must be an end. But you know, they say, no, we cannot accept that. But why? First, because Hume influenced them. Right? You see, Hume deny any kind of Causality. And Kant, he said, we cannot know the ultimate causes. Huh? We know only the phenomenon, we don't know the noumen. All those philosophers, and after that, positivist, huh? positivist, he said, exists only what we can measure. Of course, if you are in that kind of church, huh? because positivist is a sociological church, huh? uh, when you are there, you believe that everything is explained by matter. So you cannot go farther. It's a lack of faith. It's the reason why I say materialist evolutionists, they are big, big, big believer in the God we call chance or random. Because they cannot explain by finality, but they, they explain by chance. Anyway, when they use chance, can, can they measure chance? No, we cannot measure chance. Therefore, chance does not exist. We can answer them the same thing. You know? We cannot measure chance. You explain the evolution by chance at random. Okay, can you measure that? Oh, no. So when you do that, you are a metaphysician. You go farther than your capacity of measuring, of controlling. 
it is an interpretation, it is an extrapolation. Huh? Extrapolation. You go farther than your capacity. You go farther than the pole. Huh? You, well, don't, well, you don't stay behind inside the boundary of experience. So in fact, they do exactly what they reproach to us. They reproach to metaphysician to go uh, farther than experience, but when they have some chance, they do exactly the same thing. They oh, deny. Okay. They deny. Uh, they, they, in fact, they go farther because they cannot measure, they cannot control that. Okay? Um, so, um, next page, page 15. So, for them, there is no finality in the universe. Uh, we call that also materialistic monism. That means they explain everything by one principle. Mono in Greek means monos, one. Huh? So one principle is that one principle is matter. You know, they, they, they uh, close them into a bulb. Huh? A bulb. And they cannot go outside of that. That is matter. Outside, they deny. Well, some are more uh, humble. They say, we don't know. I just, okay. So I, go, I, I continue. Um, so according to Darwin's law, there is nothing that is aimed at, at in nature. There is no finality. B, the tendency of organism vary at random and indefinite and in all directions. You know? And C, adaptation in organism uh, is uh, look like perspective contra contrivances, obligation, are nothing but development of accumulation of favorable variation. You know, they say uh, the, the context change, and because of that, the animal evolve. You know? In fact, today we have, um, we have an article, the first year. Yes, I gave you, you have that. Huh? The sins of the fathers, take two. Okay? That is an article proving that Darwin is wrong in the sense of interpretation and evolution. In fact, Lamarck was a French, uh, a French scientist. He explained the evolution using finality. He said, for example, if a giraffe has a long neck, it is because the giraffe wanted to eat at the top of the trees and little by little, you know? If birds have long legs because they have to walk in the marshes, so they are that, you know? But Freud, uh, Freud uh, Darwin said, no, a chance, you know, a day, an animal uh, uh, realized that he has a long, long, long neck. He said, what I will do with my neck? He said, oh, I will use my neck. No, I, no, it was not like that. You know, the theory of our Darwin, the thing evolved without finality, and suddenly the animal used what they have to for example, the bird has a long leg. You say, hey, why do I have long legs? Why? Oh, or maybe it's useful to go in the marshes, you know? <laughs> you understand that, the difference? And today, we have the scientific proof that the evol evolution was much faster than what I thought uh, Darwin. Much faster. Because one of the arguments of Darwin, or the da not Darwin, the Darwin is not the same thing. Huh? The Darwin is... It is, they say, what makes, in fact, evolution is time. Time is the cause of evolution. Then we know today by experiences that it's not true. And one example of that is given by a scientist, it's a woman, in Russia. She, she I saw the movie, it's very, very interesting. She, she took fox, foxes, and she tamed them. And she had foxes, for, she did the experiment for 35 years. 35 years. And the last foxes, the seven generation, when they were born, they were exactly like a cat and a, and a, a dog. They were totally transformed, totally different in, in, the, in 35 years. She was able to make fat, a fox pets, animal playing with the children, you know, uh, like, like a cat. She did that, and that proof, and not only that, they realized that, they, that their DNA was modified. And in, in such a way that the, the animal transmit 
to their uh, to their uh, children to their group the, the their own transformation is very strong that is totally opposed to it. but you know Lamarck is not well accepted by Darwinian because that destroyed their system but it's a fact it is proved now that evolution was can be done very rapidly. In, 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 of course, not in two seconds. I want to say very rapidly in comparison of the history of the world. But 35 years to transform wild foxes into pets. Huh? Like that is, 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 and change their DNA. That means the dogs, the fact the fox will be born, immediately they will be pets. They will be fine in Europe. The contrary is true also. When an animal is not living with men, little by little, he comes back to his uh, origin, wolf. Huh? A dog will become a wolf. He is coming from the wolf, he will come again a wolf. Yes, brother. Father, I may be way off here. Um, I, get, I get the evolving thing with the animals and everything, but with evolution, like you said earlier, was a thing of progress, then why did we as being stop evolving? We don't stop evolving, they continue. No, but I mean, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure in 20 years I'm not going to have a tail. You know I mean? But we, but that evolution is not only to have a tail or not to have a tail. Evolution is also in the way we live, in the way we think, you know. And you have Father Théard de Chardin, huh? Théard de Chardin, uh, he has a, he has the, the paper explaining that, huh? you know. It's from Alpha, the, the beginning, the creation, uh, if I saw sometimes I said to my student, if I have to write the Bible again, I will say, at the beginning God created hydrogen. <laughs> because the simplest is in hydrogen. The sun, what is the sun? Is a is a mass of hydrogen. You know, the beautiful sun would cook us. Huh? We need him. We need hydrogen of the sun. Hydrogen. Is the first. With hydrogen, we do everything. You know? <laughs> everything is made by other with one. One electron, one proton. <laughs> well, that is chemistry. Huh? But what is interesting, little by little, there is progress. Progress in animal. But the problem is the step, the you know, the gap between non-living to living. Can matter produce life? We don't accept that, but materialists, they are finished. Why? Because they have no other explanation. Okay. And from life to intelligence, there must be another step. And, and animals cannot by themselves get there. They must be received. Well, that, if, if you accept that, you can be an evolutionist. Personally, I have no objection. I, I have a great admiration for evolution. But I, I must accept as a philosopher that we can start from matter to life, and from life to intelligence without a cause. Huh? But the progress, if, the, you know, if there is progress in, in, um, in evolution, there must be a reason. A progress is toward a goal, no? When you progress is to attain some goal. Okay. Well, here I gave you that because it is uh, only to explain the Pascal, Binomo Pascal, uh, uh, to explain that the number of great number we can and uh, we can uh, know. Uh, in fact, the more numerous case you have, the less random you have. I mean, for example, we are sure that in any country in the world, on two birds, one will be a, a boy, one will be a girl. That is the the, the 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 great number, you know, the great number. Okay. Well, I go to page seventeen. Huh? The, it is a vicious circle, you know. The surviving variations are known favorable because they survive, and they survive because they are favorable. You remember vicious circle. Huh? So the solution, huh? the admission of finality, page 17, huh? will make the Darwinian theory intelligible. You know, that theory is not, it's more than theory, it's a fact. But, but what, what we cannot accept is not the fact. We cannot accept the interpretation. Teilhard de Chardin, the Jesuit, he gave to that theory an interpretation according to the common sense, philosophy, and theology. 
<coughs> but if you are a Marxist, if you are a materialist, we cannot accept that. At least they should say, we don't know. But they cannot say that because science must explain everything. In fact, I, I indict that. <coughs> the Darwinian used the, the same concept of finality we use. For example, they use the word law. Law. The law. A law is based on uniformity. Huh? We saw that. But they use law. If there is law in evolution, there is no random. If there is law, there is no random. A law is necessarily calling for an intelligence. Huh? Mm -hmm. They speak about selection. When we select, there must be a criteria of selection. We don't select at random. If nature selects, but that must be a reason for that. There must be a criterion. The word selection, the idea implied huh? the adaptation. If there is adaptation, fitness, there must be an intelligent. Only intelligent being can adapt. Men can adapt the North Pole, equator. A bear, a polar bear cannot adapt equator. A lion cannot live in the North Pole. Huh? And they see progress. Survival. Oh, sur if you see survival, we survive for what? In fact, uh, if they accept, uh, if an uh, uh, evolutionist, we accept uh, there is a finality and there is a desire, evolution has no problem. It is exactly what says John Paul II. Uh, evolution is not against the, the faith. It's not evolution against the faith. It is the interpretation. That's a different. So if we accept uh, the interpretation that there is nothing uh, or there uh, with an order, with a, a goal. We must accept. Uh, we must, uh, there is no difficulty to accept evolution. Be careful. Huh? The opposition is not against evolution. It is against the materialistic interpretation of evolution. That is different. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm.